Hello and welcome to Skeinda Knits. My name is Ellie and I am a Norwegian living and knitting in London. And you can find me at Skeinda on Ravelry and Instagram. And there is the Ravelry group, Skeinda Knits, where a lot of you have been joining lately and that's been so much fun. And yeah, keep doing that. Everybody just come join. I mean, maybe you forgot, you know, I remember that happens to me all the time. Like I think I'm part of someone's, some podcaster's Ravelry group and I realise I'm not, so do join the group it's so much fun and there are a number of giveaways happening in that group right now well there are two essentially for on the free buy socks so there's one way you can enter by knitting my color your world socks and the other way you can enter is by posting in the giveaway thread where you basically share the most beautiful socks you've ever made and there have been so many beautiful socks in that thread it's been such a great source of inspiration which is why i'll be kind of borrowing some ideas from that thread into the other giveaway that i'll be doing this week which is for Kristen's oracle shawl so Kristen of wool and vine yarn and the yarngasm podcast has given away a copy not just to me but also to one of you guys of her new oracle shawl which i don't know about you guys but i am itching to knit it i know i know it's like fancy pants yarn and brioche and everything that i like normally don't do but it's gorgeous and it's gorgeous did i mention it's gorgeous so i am very very thrilled to be giving away a copy to one of you guys so there will be a thread for that and the rule for that thread i am kind of inventing on the spot i want you to post the most beautiful shawl pattern you know of it doesn't matter if you think you're ever going to be capable of making it if you think anyone but the designer can do such an amazing job the most beautiful amazing impressive complicated intricate whatever it doesn't have to be but you you do the rules here a uh, shawl that you have seen on Ravelry or elsewhere <sighs> a knitted shawl you know preferably um just find a Ravelry pattern and paste it in there and you will be in the draw for the oracle shawl how about that? And yeah, it's totally legit to actually just post the Oracle Shawl there. I don't blame you. So that covered the giveaways quite quickly. Now let's cover the knit-alongs. Uh, there are quite a few going on. The Colour Your World Socks knit-along will be wrapping up on September 1st. But do not worry, you will still be in the draw for Anna Freebody Socks, which will be announced next week. So I'll probably close that giveaway thread, I want to say, Monday or Tuesday. So that's one knit along that's happening. You will receive a skein of always etc yarn if you win the giveaway that is to be happening on <laughs> the beginning of September when the cal is closed. And the other knit along which is starting in September is the Marius cal which I have like managed to build up a lot of excitement over since I decided to do it. I think I decided in the winter at the end of winter and it's gonna happen now. 1st of September we are casting on. Of course you are allowed to like prepare and swatch and purchase yarn and figure things out before that but cast on happens on September 1st. Obviously you are allowed to cast on later just not before. So that is super 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 exciting and there's of course the flea knit along and I'm just going to show you my flea briefly because this is a bit of a different episode where I'm not going to cover my works in progress. So I'm just going to show you the cardigan that me and Kristen are knitting for the flea or loppa cardigan knit along. It doesn't have a closing date yet so I mean you can be bold and cast one on right now. We've been keeping it open for a while though and there are lots of exciting chatter and works in progress and even finished objects in our groups so yeah hop over there and uh, see what's happening. This is my flea. I have not made um, progress worth talking about since last week. Yes the bodice is a bit longer but I've been knitting a lot on other things so this is kind of why I won't be talking so much about Pro <laughs> how about whips <laughs> essentially because i've just done a little bit here and a little bit there like i worked a lot on my grey shawl but you can't really tell because it's just the same kind of mass and i'm yeah so i just not i'm not going to talk about whips so much in this episode i will be showing you a lot of the stuff that i just have knitted around this house it's just knits that are lingering here and there and bits and corners and closets and cupboards and what have you. But before we get into that, now that we've covered all the administrative stuff, the giveaways, the cows, everything, it's a lot. You can tell, tell that summer's about to end and the nitty autumn is coming. Now that we've covered all of that, 
I want to thank you so much for your enthusiasm and support for the Salbemitten club pattern subscription uh, bundle, if you will, Cal. <sighs> you have no idea how like anxious and excited I have been over this. I decided to do this at the beginning of the year and I've been so slowly working up patterns, knitting up the mittens and just kind of preparing and there's still work to be done for me of course I want to take some glorious photos for you guys but the patterns are done um, so I can't even tell you what it means that you guys have shown all this support and excitement for the cow I can't believe how many people have just jumped on this and have so much faith in the stuff that I have yet to show you You've literally like trusted me with your wallet and haven't seen stuff that I have designed. Um, I promise you it will, I think it's good. Um, I don't want to spoil anything, but it's essentially the mittens that I've already included in the bundle, kind of as a bonus because it was already published. It serves as a good example of what you can expect. And I said that in the last episode and I'm trying to kind of gradually step up from that. So there will be slightly a bit more challenging chart wise, color work wise after that, just requiring a bit more concentration. There's nothing like outrageous. I'm never, I promise, never gonna ask you to carry more than two strands at once. I wouldn't do that to you. I wouldn't do that to anyone. <laughs> but yeah, it just means the world that I mean, I was at a pretty low place in June, I'm not gonna lie, and having gone from that up to where I am now, thank you. I uh, I wish there were words to uh, express that, uh, say how I feel more than just thank you, and I'm humbled and excited and, oh God, it's just gonna be so much fun. Uh, thank you so much for trusting in me with this mystery thing that we're doing. The patterns will be released in full though, there's no mystery there. September 1st, the first pattern will come out, and so on, and so on. Um, the early bird price is still on, so you can still get that. Uh, if you have bought the mittens that um, I included there that are already out, you know, if you bought them before, you don't have to buy it twice. Like, I've sorted out an arrangement there, and if you're wondering how, then you should check your Ravelry inbox. So yeah, I think that's all I had to say. I really want to like spend all this episode just talking about that club and how glad I am to have you guys on board. And um, But I think I need to get a bit serious instead and explain to you, because I'm getting a number of people saying, I bought your bundle, I'm so happy to be on board and I am glad to be supporting you, Ellie. And, but I didn't get the early bird prize. And that's not true. It is impossible at the moment that you did not get the early bird prize. What did happen is that Ravelry charges VAT, V-A-T. And I explained this in the last episode, but I'm gonna to try to explain this further. So depending on where you live, in the EU or European region, uh, EA, anything there, you'll be charged between usually 20 to 25% VAT for the prize. So I think, oh, I can't remember the maths. I think it's like two, 60 or 280 pounds on top of the 14 pounds that the early bird prize is and that is closer to 16 to 17 pounds which i realize resembles 18 pounds which is the full price so no you were not charged the early bird price and no that extra money does not go to me it goes to your country and probably you know helps build schools and roads and whatnot so uh yeah i wouldn't worry too much about that and you're not you know if you were to try if you were to pay the full price then you'll be charged uh, even more of that on that because that would be 20 percent on that so anyway regardless it is impossible that you did not get the early bird price the other price is simply not available because Ravelry can't do more than one discount at once i literally had to put the price down so that i can offer any other discounts where re relevant um so yeah, I just want to make that clear. You definitely, definitely, definitely got the early bird prize. Okay, cool, we good? Yes. And I want to remind you guys again that I'll be teaching in Rhodes in Greece in uh, between kind of May and June next year. It will be a knitting retreat that Beardy Chill of the Beardy Chill podcast has set up. I don't know if it's sold out yet or not, so I'm still mentioning it in case you want to join that. 
it's gonna be amazing like I think I'll be in my PhD right up at that time if all things goes well so I'll be needing that holiday you guys really now I actually have a finished object for this week so while I won't be covering whips I will be covering the antler hatch so it's not blocked because I just don't see the point it's pretty, it's neat, I'm not really missing anything. But if I find a nice tool to block hats, I will. Because the way I blocked my hoopla hat when I was in Norway, I was actually threading it over a kind of weird funky round vase that my mom has. And that really worked out. So if I can find something with that shape, I'll be starting to block my hats as well. But for the time being, antler hat is done. And it's knit in Hillesvog and blah. And you might be more familiar with Usk by Hillesvog. I feel like that's just a more famous yarn. Emla is essentially the DK to worsted weight version of that, whereas Usk is more of a fingering to sport weight, depending on how you look at things. And as I've said before, in Norway we don't use the usual weight system. Traditionally, people have talked in terms of plies, but that's not the same ply system as is being used internationally either. Uh, things are usually two ply. Uh, up until worsted where you get three ply so that doesn't really help so we usually just refer to yarn as normal which is kind of what this is and thinner uh, or thicker <laughs> so this is the antler hat and i think i knitted above gauge but guess what it fits like a glove and it's almost a bit sad that this is not going to go to me i had decided to give it to Olaf. i might change my mind it's really nice and it fits like a glove or like a hat i should say it's not cute. I don't usually look cute in hats, but this is kind of cute. She says making this funny expression. <laughs> I don't know what that face was. But hey, it's an antler hat for the skein there. I think it's very appropriate, so I just need to weave in the ends because, uh, gosh, I have a lot of hats that doesn't have, that they don't have weaved in ends yet. I don't know what it's about me and weaving in ends on hats. But I want to talk a little bit about how I made this because you might see that there's an end coming out here and I didn't join a skein. Oh no! I started out by making the hat itself. So I cast on here, knit up here, realised that I uh, didn't actually need to make as many kind of antler repeats as the pattern called for. So then I bound, bound off after the kind of decrease crown thing thing. And then I cast on the rib separately, knit that until I felt like I didn't how much left of the skein to be honest and I kitchener stitched the rib onto the hat. Was it boring? Yes but I am very very happy that I have used up every little bit and scrap of the yarn so and that's pretty much what I was going for and I like a good long rib but I don't like making it at the expense of you know not being able to finish the hat. So I could of course have just picked up the stitches and knitted downwards, but I love my twisted cast on. My, if you want to call the German twisted cast on or the old Norwegian cast on, same thing, different name. I love it. So I just wanted that and that's what I had to do to achieve that. So antler hat, you guys, it is done. Now, while I wasn't going to talk about whips, I haven't worked on the brick sweater this week. I, I literally soaked it and dried it because I've been very hesitant or... Uh, doubtful about the size because the neck opening looked very large and so I did that and the neck opening you guys what is this let's just try this on and I can show you what I'm which way is which ah pardon me no this is not what I was going for I'm going for a raglan sweater where the neckline's up here this think it's gonna have to be sent to the frog pond and I think my savior is gonna be the improv pattern which is kind of a improv pattern uh, it's not really a pattern it's kind of a recipe of how you can improvise your sweater and I think I'll start with that neck cast on doesn't say much about a stitch count I don't think so I'll still have to sort out the biggest problem so I think maybe that actually isn't gonna solve much at all because I wonder if the improv and the sweater start out the same way it's just that this one starts up with way too many stitches and I don't know if that's how the pattern accounts for larger sizes because I wonder maybe actually the designer is uh, in more of their petite variety and has decided to make the different sizes by increasing the initial cast on stitch count and that makes sense when I look at people's project pages on Ravelry because I can see that 
the larger knitters among us, they have wider neck openings than the smaller ones. And that might be a coincidence, but I'm wondering if that might be the case here that... I mean, I could check the pattern and count the stitches, but that would explain why the neckline suddenly is like this. Because that's not going to work out, and then it has to be frogged. I will say the yarn feels a lot nicer when washed up. Still a bit unyieldy, so I don't... I'm not super excited to work with it, because it's not... there's no bounce. It's not very giving. <sighs> so... And I might just skein up what I have on this cone, put it into separate skeins, give it a good wash, so let it be a bit easier to work with, maybe, if I think that will work. I don't know, if you ever worked with this yarn, this is Italiensk Tweed by Garnut Salk, I will be happy to know uh, what you think. I think it's a great yarn, I have no complaints about the yarn, it's just my hands, I tend to put in a lot of force when I end with this, and my hands get a bit tired. So that's kind of why the brick sweater has been a bit of a languishing whip very, very quickly after cast on, unfortunately. But it's going to be a lovely sweater whenever I do finish it, but yeah, no. But can I show you my little stitch markers? It's a little kitty cats. So I got four of these. I believe I got these from Nest in London when they had the yarn crawl day like two years ago or something. No, it was Love Your Yarn Shop Day. And I went up there and if you were like one one of the ten first customers who spent £25 or something, you got a goodie bag and I got that, of course. I have uh, some acquisitions today as well. Becky is in town, so Becky of uh, Soprano Nets or Stringing It Together or Singing It Together, if you will. Uh, she's in town. Her boyfriend lives in London, so we have been hanging out and we went to Liberty yesterday. And uh, I was really good. I didn't buy a single skein of yarn and I nearly wanted to buy sewing patterns and fabrics but I'm like, Ellie, the least thing you can do is to try the sewing machine first. So I managed to control myself. So I found this gorgeous till in the buttons dress pattern. Anyway, that'll have to wait. I think I need to take the baby steps there. So what I did buy, some buttons. I am working up a baby cardigan, which I think I'll just show you next week because I just, uh, yeah, mm, nah. Um, but yeah, it need, needs buttons. So, Liberty of London, that's the logo here, but I don't know if you can see that. So yeah, I've restrained myself because you have no idea how much I wanted to buy and just how quickly the price was kind of accumulating. And uh, yeah, no, couldn't do that. So, bought buttons. And uh, truth to be told, my financial situation is not grand. I am a student and student loans in Norway. I live on student loans. I'm a self-funded PhD student, so they don't give you that much money to live off because they assume that you're going to take a job next to your studies. But I'm a full-time PhD student. That's just out of the question. It's proper full-time job. It's not like... Yeah, so basically I can't work aside my job, so, but I still receive the amount of money that I kind of assume that I will be able to take a job. As Plus, they don't actually give students money over the summer. You're also expected to take a job then. Whereas mine isn't all year we're on study, so it just doesn't really fit. So I need to calm down the yarn purchases. I do. I did. I mean, at Fiberist, I did really calm down. It's a bit dodgy talking about your financial situation on the internet, but mine is not of the greatest kind, so there's no reason to rob my bank, just saying. I do have more acquisitions, though. It's a Chagu needle set, and I realise the hypocrisy here of having just like said I'm poor and then buying fancy pants needles. I was cleaning my room and I found a Amazon voucher for fifty pounds. So <laughs> there you go. So I paid about nine pounds for this set, and I figure that's reasonable. So it is the Chagu interchangeable needle set, and. It has smaller needles of the longer length, so they come in, I think, 4 inch and 5 inch, and I got 5 inch, and I got size a US 2 to 8 or 2.75 millimeter to 5. The annoying thing, whenever you buy an interchangeable set from America, you don't get 3 millimeter needles. I don't understand why. 3 millimeter needles is my I love my three millimeters. That's why I do all my mittens with colorwork socks and colorwork mittens, three millimeters. So I bought extra at Fiber East. So full set. And it only comes with three cables. And I have to say, with Chaya Goose, K 
cables, not my favorite part. I like the needles. They remind me a great deal of the Nitpro Novas, actually. And a bit of um, Hi Hi as well, though not as light. So I will be looking for getting the, oh, what's the name? The ones that rotate within the cable. They're not called twist, they're called something. I will just write it here if I remember. If not, there's another kind of cable. They are less stiff and the joint of the cable kind of rotates around the cable. So if you need to kind of twist on and off the needle or join the cable or whatever, you can do that without actually having to turn your entire knitting and just make it a mess, which happens, unfortunately, with my Knit Pro needles. Love Knit Pro, but if I had any point of suggestion for improvement for Knit Pro, it will be to essentially get cables that are more like that, more like uh, Chagu and Haya Haya, where the cable itself is kind of independent of the join, but still smooth. Uh, it's a challenge. I, I can agree with that. So yeah, try your needles, you guys. Haven't tried them, don't know what to expect. I don't know how I feel about them. Uh, my chai history is a bit funny. I um, I got my first chai as nine inch needles. I think this was before the whole nine inch uh, hype or the opposite, depending on whether you like them or not. And I just don't like, I will avoid Magic Loop or DPNs if I can help it, so I was googling around seeing if there were smaller uh, circular needles than the ones that I had and turns out there is a thing called 9 inch. So I went with the Addies because I like Addy. But the Addy needles, they are European and use as metric so they are actually 20 centimeters, not 23 which is what a 9 inch usually is. So they are impossible to work with. They have come up with uh, new needles now where one needle is longer than the other but I have the ones before that and no, just no. So I checked out a YouTube review video where someone, I don't know who, don't remember, had compared lots of different 9 inch needles and Haya Haya's and Chagu came out the winner and for some reason Chagu seemed most persuasive to me. The needles were nice and long and smooth and metallic and nice red cable. I do love a good red. So I ordered one or two and I was angry the first time I tried them because there was something like literally sticky about the cable so I couldn't carry my yarn around and I was like using Superwash Merino or something so that it's not the yarn it was literally sticky but after I'd worked a few rounds that went away so I don't know if there was like some kind of sheath or something there that was uh, messing things up so actually I came to really like my 9 inch um, but still I've not been so persuaded by the cables uh, more than that. I really like prim cables and addy cables and a lot of people don't like addy cables and I can understand why. I mean the reason I like them is because they literally you can do anything you want with a cable like it's super flexible. Magic loop not an issue here but it tends to get these kinks that stay in the cable. They say you can get rid of it by soaking in hot water. Uh, I hope so because uh, my most beloved 80 centimeter Addy needle uh, has just kinks all over. I have made a lot of mittens and Christmas balls and socks with those. So, yeah, it's got a bit of a rough treatment. And the other cable I really like is Prim. It's a bit more stiff, but for me, it was a huge improvement from the usual kind of plastic cables that I had before that, you know, kind of pony in that uh, kind of territory. So it's still like, you know, you could do magic loop here, that's no problem. I feel like maybe this isn't too far off from Chagu. They seem relatively memory free. You can kind of hold them together far out here. So maybe it's fine. I'll give it a shot. I'll let you know how I feel. But yes, nearly all my needles are metal needles. I just, mm, me and wooden don't really get on. I have one wooden set that I like and that's uh, Symphony Dreams, I think. The ones that are color coded by Knit Pro or Knit Pride, if you will. I like them. But I have to say I broke in a number of them because I just knit very tight and yeah. And I just want to tell the world, you know the needles that everybody's raving about with the driftwood and they have an amazing join? They're pronounced Lycke. Just, I just want to put that out there. Lycke. Everybody's been able to pronounce Hygge so far. It's literally the same vowel. It's the same thing. Just telling the world that so I don't have to hear Lycke anymore. Okay, we're good. <laughs> 
So for the rest of this podcast episode, I am going to cover stuff that I have knitted that is just to be found around this room. I couldn't be bothered to get my pot holders from the kitchen, which is super lazy because that's my design. I'm putting a photo here. Just it's warm. I have to keep the windows shut to keep this like bearable to listen to. So bear with me. It's not even hot outside. It's just sunny. Anyway, I thought I'd just show you everything I'm gonna. I have knitted that's here because. Last episode I said I could show you my box of mittens and a lot of people were positive to that and I thought why stop there? And I have done this before but I think that was when I just started out podcasting and there's a lot more to show now so shall we just get started? I think we're gonna start with hats. So here's the pile of hats. Actually, actually this is the pile of hats because we want to include the antler hat, right? Okay, so where do we begin? Uh -huh. This is my Christmas hat. You will remember this, I made it last Christmas. Have I weave it in the end? No, no, we don't do that, so. Am I really gonna try on every hat? So, Christmas in August. I really like this. I came up with a pattern and uh, just, yeah, might write it up sometime. But yeah, it's uh, what I wear when I podcast during Christmas and look like an idiot and it's great. It's knit in Sisu by Somnus, it's a nice, lump red yarn kind of fingering to sport weight it's got nylon in it if you ever want to make some nice sturdy neat socks you can get that at skd yarns that's literally the only source of uh sunless yarns that i know of internationally so i keep mentioning them a lot but yeah there you go and i made this sock head hat out of opal it's a particular uh, like version of opal that has this kind of rustic uh german breed of sheep I can't remember, so it's quite harsh compared to most of all. But it fits nice. It's just not quite my colour, like it actually looks nice on me, but it's not a colour that I would wear. It doesn't really go with me. So I've been wondering if it should go into the Christmas gift box if there were any. I just don't know who would wear it because it's like it's kind of like playful colours in a way, so it needs a certain personality, I think. And this I did in this kind of teddy boucle yarn, it's a Marks and Cottons yarn, a Swedish yarn. And I did this in a kind of uh, twisted, spiralling rib, but you can't tell because of the boucle. And that's the kind of thing I had to learn as a beginner knitter, so I think I made this in 2011 or something. It's just... I mean, it's cosy, I'll give it that. And I have two Marius hats. One is a bit on the smaller side because it's actually just a headband but then I realised I have enough yarn to make it into a hat so it's a hat. It's a bit boxy on top but yeah it's a hat but I don't really wear it because uh, well I don't know it just doesn't quite fit the shape of my head somehow. I don't know maybe it's because I invented a hat from a headband. <laughs> and now the Mary's hat is just too friggin big like it's nice and slouchy and big and stuff, but I mean, it's just way bigger than it ever needs to be. I like wearing it outside my headphones, but it's just, come on, it's crazy. I just completely messed up the size of this one. Gauge-wise, stitch-wise, everything. But it's a hat that I have gone and done. And I think I used um, Dale Falk for both of them, which is a very lovely kind of superwash, I mean, it's a superwash uh, DK2 sport. I know, yarn. I've kind of fallen out of love with super washed yarns as of late. Um, so I don't know if I'll be using that again, but it's a lovely experience for the time being. And that's a yarn I can recommend if you don't mind super wash. Here's a pattern, I think it's just called Norwegian Star Hat or something. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. And I use drops. I don't remember what it's called. It's like that really fluffy alpaca yarn that's more like just. It's completely unspun and it's like just a strand of fluff, really. So it is really proper fluffy and amazingly soft and warm. But again, I don't know if it's my... Yeah, I just don't know. I don't know. So it might go into the Christmas gift box as well. I mean, it is lovely to wear, but it's like proper hairy. Should go to someone who needs a very warm hat, I think. <laughs> Gosh, this is gonna be the worst hair episode ever. And my pussy hat. Was it was that pussy hat or pussy cat hat? I'm sorry if you find that a very uh, offensive word. Uh, I just think about cats when I say that, so that's where I'm gonna go with that. It's a cat hat. 
I like this hat. I made it in January when everybody were making these. Or oh, was it February? I don't remember. But yeah, it's made in Quinson Co. Lark, which is amazing yarn. Oh, I love Quinson Co. Lark. Quinson Co. is great in general, you guys. So yeah, there's that. And this hat screams to be blocked. I don't usually block my hats, so I didn't hear either, but I think this one really needs to, because it's got color work in superwash yarn, so. <laughs> This is just the worst. I'm glad we're almost done with the hats, you guys. So I'm not going to try more hats on, I think. Although I think this is the lost cause, quite frankly. Yeah, so that's the sheep head hat. Isn't that what it's called? It's sheep. No, bubble sheep hat. Oh my god, I'm mixing with the sock head hat. So it's a Donna Smith pattern for the first Shetland Woolwig hat pattern. And I used Sumner's Smart. I think if I was to do this again, I'd opt for a pale gint instead, because that's what I used to make my hoopla hat. So that's kind of the non-superwash equivalent of this hat. And you can totally see why a non-superwash is preferable. Someone asked me for my mitten patterns, why do I say non-superwash yarn when it comes to colour work? I think images be clearer than words here. This is like... It's kind of... You, you see the individual stitches, you don't... They kind of almost distract from the whole. It's like just kind of webby in a way, whereas this becomes a holistic fabric. Do you know what I mean? It kind of fills itself in. It's You kind of have to feel it as well to understand it. It's hmm, hard to explain. It's just too smooth as well for colour work. I think you need a less glossy slippery yarn, if that makes sense. But I'm still happy with this, but probably going to go away to someone for Christmas because I need to get on the Christmas knits. Although this is my selfish knitting year so I might not be that generous this year. We'll see. But yes, the hoopla hat in Pear Gint by Sunless, designed by Diana Walla and it is to be found in the anniversary edition of Pom Pom Magazine. And I love this hat. It is probably the best hat I've ever knitted. You can see this bunch. There's some good ones there. There's some bad ones there. This one is just far, far superior. And I think it's largely to do with the fact that Diana offered multiple sizes and my head is big and when I try to modify a average adult head size into my size it goes fairly wrong. Here I didn't have to do that so that was grand. I also have these mitts and they serve as a very good example of a bunch of colour work mistakes that people could make because these are my kind of beginner colour work thingies and one of them is being too tight, not allowing your floats to be long. You essentially get that your pattern, your garment kind of goes inwards where you need, where you didn't stretch out your floats enough. So it just kind of bends inwards. It should have literally been quite, not that. Um, so they're too small. I can't really get them on my hands. So I'm just looking for someone who has larger, smaller hands than me. And it's also uneven tension here. I'm not necessarily keeping the yarn in the right order all the time. So you get this kind of, it doesn't look so neat. That's fine, it comes with practice. Uh, so I thought, you know, these are knit too tight, so I'm going to knit looser. Not really how you do it. So I tried to force my gauge to be looser. And in the end, it was very loose, but I couldn't even fit the top border in because I've just kind of loosened everything on purpose, and that's not good. And it still isn't even, and the floats aren't quite right. It's an improvement, but it's kind of cheating yourself. What you really need to make sure is that the floats are right. You stick with the needle size you have and whatever attention that gives you. Floats is key. And the other thing is, alpaca is a big no-no. I'm sorry, I know a lot of people prefer alpaca, but I just don't think it's good for colour work. And you can sort of see here, just, it's just, you do, it's the same issue that I have with um, non-superwash. It's just not, it doesn't kind of integrate itself, you know? You don't get that look that you want with colour work. It just becomes kind of webby and you see each individual strand and it sags and, you know, so. I don't know what to do with these. I don't wear them. It was just kind of a thing to make. And it's made in Sunless Thin Alpaca. <sighs> it's just something that's kind of dusting away. <laughs> oh, and this is my first piece of colour work. I managed to put my favourite band's logo on a phone cosy. And it just looked so horrible in the end that I had to just stitch through. So this isn't colour work at all. I literally just put a strand of yarn through the stitches that I thought was going to make the colour work work out. So it's been a long journey there you guys so if you're new rest assured you're not gonna be this bad i don't think <laughs> i 
and I have some acrylic socks actually I forgot that I bought a bunch of acrylic yarn when I was new in London because I struggled with the kind of unavailability of yarn here relative to Norway and this is the kind of yarn you can pick up in corner shops and I was dirt poor because I've told you about kind of student finances and stuff so I just made, made some Mary socks and alpaca yarn and they've held up all right I'm not particularly fussed about them either way they just kind of they're what they are if they if I wear them out I'm not gonna be too sad because nothing precious about them either way they're just uh, something on my journey to make socks I think and here's the design of mine it's my leg warmers I actually managed to come up with these when I was quite new to color work because it's quite easy to design color work I have to say and these are just a tube with some decreases once you get past the color work and the decreases could be improved on I am well aware of that which is why it's a free pattern so you do what you want there it's uh, just kind of a suggestion of how you can make leg warmers lots of rib on top and then a little bit at the bottom and they keep my legs nice and warm because they're made in drops lima which is a wool and alpaca blend and alpaca is crazy crazy hot and if you have a bit of wool you give the uh, yarn just a bit more memory so i actually don't think lima is that bad for color work because it has the wool which gives the alpaca like i said memory and stickiness I think actually Louise of Knit British talked about this a couple of episodes back. Their the title says something about alpaca, so that's how you can find that. It's probably just like four or five episodes back. So yeah, happy with these. I like them, I wear them. And I made some stockings. That's right. This is crazy. There are two of them. It's nuts. I uh, I started these I think two years ago and I finished them a bit less than a year ago so it was actually really enjoyable to make you start up here and god I wish I'd done two by two rib and not this loose one by one rib no so I did that and you knit down you just knit in the round and I did it with my nine inch I think or possibly was it 12 inch it's like 30 centimeter and just go down and down and down and then start decreasing your shape for the leg and then I stopped. I did that for both and I stopped because I didn't know how I wanted to do the heel and I just gave up. Then I realised I can just do the conventional heel flap and gusset and I did that and I finished them. And they are grand. I think they are so cool. And I'd make them again. Honestly, this is fun to make. I, it's, uh only good things to say about these. I know it sounds, it looks and sounds like a crazy undertaking. I don't feel like it was. And they look super cool. And they look kind of different when I hold them like this because there are like two kinds of charts in the diamonds. So if I hold them like this, they yeah, you can see where the kind of repeats go. So yeah, I really like them. They are awesome. Gosh, we haven't even covered the socks and mittens and sweaters yet. So I think I will cover my smallest mittens first. If I can open this bag. You may remember these mittens. Okay, I can't do this. I'm just going to ruin the bag and use another one. Uh, for the environment sorry planet so i keep everything in plastic nowadays because i'm scared of moths just this country hasn't figured out a way with moths like collectively yet so you just get moths everywhere anyway this is my mitten calendar and they've all been squashed up into a bag for a long time so they're a bit kind of bent out of shape but yeah it's essentially a collection of 24 color work mittens so there you go they are just the cutest. I'm not going to show you each and every one, just give you an idea. There are 24 of these. They are super, super, super tiny. Very, very fine colour work. I'm talking like I'm talking to them as if they were babies. So, yeah. It was a crazy undertaking. It took me a year, if not more. I can recommend it though. It was fun. Just, you get to do something new for every mitten. And it really perfected my colour work knitting, you guys. So... Yeah, I'm gonna put them away now. Uh, we will see them again once Christmas arrives, which will probably happen sooner than we are ready for. <laughs> and I actually have a box of socks. Kind of, sort of, maybe. This is my box of socks. It looks like this. It's a bit of a, kind of a colour work heaven. There are, there's one pair of socks that is not colour work. You might remember them. It's the Villemo socks by Anna Fribay. That's the same designer um, who's... I'm now doing a giveaway for and you might know her as Apakana from before and she designed these and I test knitted them for her they got lovely soft cable and a little bit of rib to keep the sock on uh, I used uh, the lighter pink is uh, 
don't want to say red yet. Uh, don't think it was opal. It was red yet. And the uh, stark pink is Wolmeiser, of course. So that's one pair of socks. This is the circle socks, which I did in Cascade Heritage and uh, the Brooklyn Handspun, the Lady Persephone yarn or colorway. I'm not sure. That was pretty interesting, and they kind of blend together in a yeah, interesting way. I have to say I'm very disappointed with Cascade Heritage. It used to be good, but then they changed their production to a different country and the yarn went from being a nice, soft, delicious, sturdy sock yarn to being a thing of fluff and halo and just not nice. I've hardly worn these and they're just fluffy, fluffing and fluffing and that's not the kind of peeling you want. So it's strictly speaking just a shawl yarn right now. And I hate that I have to find I had to find that out the hard way. And we have these socks, which are my K Sardin Mouche. There's like the Emperor's Bride, I think they're called. It's like it's in Finnish, and I don't know Finnish because if you don't know this, Finnish is nothing like the other Scandinavian languages. It's just completely different. Um, so yeah, it's a Finnish design. I e but finished designer. I love these. I want to make more of these. I really enjoyed making them, quite frankly. And I made them a tad bit too small for me. And I know my sister wants a pair, so maybe I could do some larger ones sometime. And uh, these socks are the socks that I give the most love and wear. Because these are made in Regia. And they are the snowflake socks. And I just wear them to death. And they still hold up really well. They're more than two years old. And given how much I wear these and put them in shoes and whatever, they have held up beautifully. They could use some more blocking, I'm sure, but yeah, I don't have any bad words to say about this. You could use a good wash as well, quite frankly. <laughs> and we have more Serbu socks. So those long stockings were also Serbu socks. And these were made from the same booklet. And and it, according to pattern down here, although I put in some red bits that was inspired by another project on Ravelry. And then it's done here and I just didn't follow the instructions anymore and just put in the heel flap and gusset that I know. Because I don't like the heels in that pattern booklet. I really don't. Uh, it would be interesting to try with the fish lips kiss heel here actually. I used Lang Yarn for this. I picked that up at Loop and they are really nice and soft and light. I feel like Lang Yarn is a bit comparable to Coop Knits in a way. So it might be interesting to do this with Coop Knits as well. So yeah, these are my socks. I really like them. They are delicious. And lastly, we have my own socks. Call your world socks. I did make two pairs of these, but I gave the other pair away to a friend of mine for Christmas. So I just have these for myself. And I have to admit, I haven't worn them because I'm like, it's my first design for socks. How could I ever wear them? But I know my friend has worn them to death and they are still holding up great and she loves them and they fit her well and she puts them in her shoes and it's all fine and dandy. So there are my socks. Although I just remembered, hang on. I still have my Mercury socks. They should be in that box with the other ones. My oh dear, should we do that? Should we just take them off? The ends, you guys. Just no, don't weave in ends ever. I'm pretty sure the Collier Work socks have their ends out yet, yeah, also. I'm horrible. Just, oh. So, Mercury, put them in the pile. My socks. So, these are not socks from this year, so. If I'm gonna make it to box of socks challenge doing, you know, 12 pairs this year, I don't know. But I have a few pairs from like my years as a knitter. So when I say I'm not a big sock knitter, that's kind of what I mean. I only do so many. When I do them, I do them, you know, but to some extent. I don't do them as often as most people, I think. Yeah, squeezing in my stockings as well. That's my box of socks and it needs, it needs a bigger box. Speaking of what needs a bigger box, my mitten box. There are a lot of mittens in here. Just, oh my God. And these don't even fit in. So, you know, these mittens I recently finished. Uh, there are the Enigma mittens by Turi Seista. I've talked about them lots of times. So you can find out everything about every pattern here on Ravelry. I log my projects obsessively, so you can find everything there. They're sorted by year, they're sorted by type of garment or accessory. So they should not be hard for you to find out. So please, 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 please check there before you ask me what pattern that is and where you can find it. You can find it there. Yes, my Snow White mittens. You might remember these. I made them in delicious lambswool. And oh, they're just so good. So I'm gonna put them on because they feel like a dream. Oh my God, oh my God. Just, oh. 
I get to see myself wearing these. I'm not giving these away. They're just too freaking gorgeous and lovely to wear. A bit long, I have to say, but you know, I like a bit of wriggle space for my fingers. <laughs> so yeah, they've got this kind of lace thingy thing happening on top. Might be a bit squashed because I squashed them into this box. And here are my mitts. I have not blocked these. I'm starting to see when I haven't had it blocked now that the alarming uh, kind of change. But yeah, there are my Miss Rachel's mitts. I have made two pairs of these, but the other pair I gave away to a friend of mine. They are knit up in a mix of Reuma Fienulgarn and PT2. That is PT2. Okay, shall we take them from the oldest to the most recent? So the oldest is at the fur back. So I'm gonna start with that. They are a pair of Serbu style mittens, but with mousse, because I like mousse and anything with antlers, quite frankly. They're made in Silja, Silja, Silja by Yestal. It's a kind of super, a supermarket kind of yarn we have in Norway. Sport weight with nylon, so for thick socks and that kind of thing. I will say it doesn't hold up great. Like, uh, I had to make one because I lost one of them. So this one's look, this one looks all right. This one, I mean, I don't think this is a high quality yarn. It's okay for what it is. It's affordable, so you get what you pay for. It's just, um, nah, I don't like the pilling on this. But I'm just being a bit fussy. I think most people would probably find this yarn completely acceptable. And I made another pair of mittens in the same yarn. Also, these are more classic serve mittens. I believe they're from Terry Shia's book. So there's some controversy there whether they are authentic serve mittens or not. So yeah, they're nice and they fit really well. Which is something I struggle with mittens sometimes, but these fit really well. I'm not even going to talk about that pillow because you've seen it so many times, so you should know. <laughs> it's a Marius pattern, basically. And I also did these mittens also in that yarn. They're kind of Latvian style, but with a manageable gauge. And I did some alterations here that I'm really happy I did because that makes them fit really well. So yeah, again, a bit long. Usually my problem is that mittens aren't long enough, but sometimes they become too long. That's the problem with colorwork mittens. If you need to adjust the length, you can't, because the chart is what it is. Yeah, happy with these, definitely. Uh, so I have a lot of mittens, uh, but the only ones that I wear are these. Because they're gorgeous, and they're designed by Venki Rua, who I think is going to publish either the second or the third pair of socks in the kind of sock mystery knit along that on the Menke and Pia, that's Pia of Kamebonia, uh, are doing with Moods of Colour Socks. So, yeah, that's really interesting, but then again. But anyway, this is what Menke did. Uh, she designed these and I knit them. And they have been the most educational mitten pattern that I found on Ravelry. And I have really learned a lot from these and also in terms of making my own mitten patterns. I think they're great. And I love wearing them and they are beautiful and just ah i love them <laughs> and these are actually quite special to me because they were the first time i actually took someone's advice and knit them in the room of yarn instead of using my cheap superwash supermarket yarn i decided to go to the craft society shop which is what i apparently decided to translate who's free in with and picked up yarn for these and my set the star card again and that's how these came to be and I was like oh my god the way the stitches are laying out here is perfect suddenly I understand why you use this yarn for color work and that's literally how I needed to understand it was to just buy the yarn never mind how I felt about it just knit it and see what happened when I used it and it, I was just amazed and I never really looked back saying that though I did make another pair of mittens and some superwash yarn because uh with Nuli's gone, you just have to kind of go with that. And I thought this yarn would be perfect for this pattern because it kind of looks like a sort of cathedral window. And these are also by Turi Seista. And as always, her mittens fit me really well. I have struggled with mitten fit in the past, but never with her mittens. They always fit me really well. And then I used some more Reuma Fienul garn and I made these. And they are the same as the other pair of mittens from Eventyrvotti, it's a book about fairy tale mittens and it's great. So I did these, it's Gullfulen, I think it's by Frida Engse, I want to say. You can find out about this on Ravelry. But yeah, I wish I'd chosen a more orange yellow than a yellow yellow, but hey, well, this is what we have. And they're really cool, I think. Just something that was cool to try. And then I made a pair of mittens that I've actually made before and given to my sister. 
but I wasn't happy with that pair and I said I was never going to knit that again but I did and I'm actually very happy that I did and they turn out really well and I knit them in Usk by Hillesvog and I think this was my first meeting with Usk and I again never looked back Usk and Finogarn are just oh they're the best but yeah not, not the softest of yarn I, yeah no I look forward to having a cardigan in this yarn though but yeah I have to say it's <sighs> people have different preferences I really like this yarn and it just does wonders with these mittens so I just had to make another pair so I think that's from the same book. These are all from either on the Musunbe or Terry Shia's, um, Shia, Shia, I don't know how to say her name, uh, books. Again, everything is on Ravelry and yeah, just another pair of salve mittens. And then Christmas this year arrived and Tudi Seishta was doing a Mr. Knit Along for her Christmas mittens and of course, I took part in that and this is not an end I haven't weaved in, they're supposed to be this way. And yeah, they actually say Merry Christmas in like lots of languages at the back, which is pretty cool. I should show you that. That's probably the best way of doing it, isn't it? So yeah. Uh, anyway, I need to move on. We're spending too much time on the little things here. The shawls and sweaters to go. This is going to be one of those long episodes. And these mittens you might recognise. They are Shine by Pia Comeborn of Comebornia. And these are some really authentic seven mittens that I knit in Blackie Tamar. So this is Fingergarn, Blackie Tamar, doing two mittens at once so that we can finish in time. But yeah, uh, these are both a really nice kind of experience to knit. I'm not sure how I feel about doing mittens in this again. It has a bit of a halo because of the long staple fibres that Tamar consists of. So I'm not sure if I would again, but it was an interesting experience for sure. But the sheep fibre here reminds me a tad bit about alpaca, so might use it for other things. And of course the shine mittens, they are amazing and they look gorgeous in Vinergarn. I can see myself doing another pair of these easily. And the pattern is super memorizable, so if you ever want to try out fingering weight colour work mittens instead of my DK weight, have a go at these. I mean, the lateral braids are a pain, they always are. Uh, these are, they're nothing about the pattern, it's just lateral braid and me, we don't get on. But I do them anyway. <laughs> That's my stack of mittens. It's a pretty big stack. It's just so many mittens. What am I doing? And I got the mittens that I knit for the, uh, the club and there's just so many mittens. I have problems, you guys. This is just like crazy bananas. That's all the cool kids say. So, let's get on with the shawls. I need to change my battery first. I will see you in a tad bit. Okay, so shall we start with the shawls? These are the shawls. I will hang them all here just for making things easy. So this is a very simple free shawl pattern. It's called Latte, I think, on drops. It's got a bit of a fold in the middle just because of how I folded it. But yeah, it's knit purely in alpaca boucle. It's amazing, soft, and just easy to make. When I was completely new at shawl knitting, this was a piece of cake for me even, so. I did this in 2011, I think, before I moved to London. And yeah, it's just been keeping me warm ever since. And it's really wearable. I love this shape. Just, I want all shawls to be this shape, quite frankly. It's just very wearable and nice. And sure, it doesn't draw as much attention as some of my other shawls, but it's just, yeah, very basic shawl. Um, so the next thing I did was, of course, anything but basic is a ginormous shawl in Volmeiser lace. This is more like a wrap really. And I did it in the round which is really cool. So I'm like a little red riding hood in this thing. I don't know how I'm ever gonna be like wearing this or styling it or anything but it's a huge thing. It was a huge undertaking. It's just actually how I broke my wooden needles because there was just too many stitches. Because in, in the round you can imagine how many stitches you have when you're doing these ruffles all the way around. Yeah, I just needed a very basic stocky net stitch knitting that I could take to seminars and stuff at work. <sighs> so yeah, I'm very happy with this. Uh, it's just kind of difficult to wear, so I'm going to be honest. It's a Martina Ben pattern called New Ben. So that was that. The next is oh another Martina Ben, which is the Trillion scarf. It's called Trillion shawl, but let's be real, it's a scarf. I find this very difficult to wear. I've worn it many times, but I'm thinking 
maybe make it a gift because I just the lack of symmetry drives me up the wall I just can't wear this thing just I, no so I think maybe someone else might wear this more maybe you know mom or something it is really lovely though and it's in Madeleine Tosh so I was just like yeah I thought you know this is gonna be the last time I'll ever have this kind of fancy pants yarn so I'm gonna make the best of it and it ended up being something I didn't quite see myself wearing but now I have tons of fancy pants yarn so it's all good <laughs> the next shawl it's the Kristen Kapoor shawl and this among the recent shawls probably the one I've worn the most I've used Drops Apaka and Drops Delight nothing fancy about this yarn I could probably block it a bit better because I didn't really know about pinning at the time I literally just wet it and dried it but yeah it's just a great knit absolutely wearable again has that shape you know like it could have been longer here sure but i find it very yeah wearable and comfortable and warm so then i started getting into helen stewart shawls and i actually thought this shawl was a complete disaster because i slipped the first stitch and it made it really really tight on top but now i'm thinking actually maybe that's okay because when i haven't done that on question sh shaped shawls after that we'll get to that they didn't get this shape at all and this one has a bit more depth to it because the kind of top keeps itself intact and when i blocked it it wasn't actually that bad so it is quite wearable turns out uh, it wasn't as bad as i thought and i used third volt yarn it's a yarn by a dyer called lola who dyes locally to me ish i think um so yeah not a bad start actually even though i thought it was at the time and then I used some woolen vine yarn to make the Duchess of Devonshire. So this is kind of a bit of a podcast combo because I got very inspired by Katie's shawl, which is basically the same. And I used Kay Jones of Bakery Bears Design and I used Kristen of Yarn Gassum's woolen vine yarn. Oh my god, there's a huge butterfly outside. Anyway, so I did this and I'm actually not that happy with it because, again, Crescent Shaves and me, we don't get on. And I did, I was like, I'm not going to slip the first stitch this time. And maybe I should have, because now that the top kind of edge doesn't contain the shawl, it just becomes very long. So when I wear this, and I've talked about how I like wearable shawls, it just, eh. It becomes very long, like it's still like flapping down here. You can't even see where it stops. It's just not what I want from a shawl. So I have to wear it like this if it's going to look like anything, but that doesn't keep my neck warm. So no, I think what I think I'll do is actually frog the entire thing and knit it up again, but use a different construction method. So I still want to make case design and I still want to use Kristen's yarn. I just think maybe putting the increases within the body of the shawl instead to make it less wide, more deep, more what I want do the edge again which took a long time because this yarn is too precious too gorgeous to go to waste into a shawl that I don't enjoy wearing it's gonna hurt a lot to rip it out but I just can't not have this yarn around my neck more basically it's delicious it's the Volke base and the Outlander colorway so there's that and that's my Christmas cast on so you know I gotta make it right and then I did the snow melt shawl and after all my kind of unfortunate luck with the the bad luck I had with the crescent shapes uh, Helen Stewart launched a half pie shawl and I was all over this so I thought yes finally I get a shape that I wanted proper proper death and it totally has that and it's wearable and amazing and I look like a freaking bride in this thing I was, I'm still kind of stunned at how gorgeous this thing is and how I made it, but just, what? So yeah, many thanks to the genius of Curious Handmade for making these kinds of patterns so easy for the knitter to make and follow. Just, yeah, I could go on and on. So we're moving on to another Helen Stewart shawl because I was a bit on a Helen Stewart kick after that. So I did the, what is it, the amulet shawl? And I used a bunch of Countess of Blaze yarn, both her Tia Marino and her 
uh, BFL sock yarn. Oh, I forgot the name. Lay, what's it called? Persephone as well? I don't know. Anyway, again, very wearable shape. I love a good triangle. I don't think I'm going to do the latest triangle of the Shaw Society though. It didn't quite... I don't know. And I have a triangle, so now I shouldn't really need one. <laughs> so yeah, I love this. I think, yeah, I said what I wanted to say about Helen's designs. I think they are great and addictive and it really makes you want to finish because you can see your progress when following in the pattern with the percentage system. So that's awesome. Sorry I'm going very fast here, but I've been going on for long enough already. So this is the shawl that I test knit for Pinaguri, the needle lady on Muda. You know the drill. It's knit in Brooklyn Tweed Loft and as of right now, it is easily the shawl I wear the most. And I wear it during the winter and the summer and well, I haven't had it in the winter yet. It's called the winter shawl. I wear it during the summer. I just wear it all the time. It's so easy to just drape over myself and it will stand up on its own because Loft is magic yarn. And yeah, it's just amazing. It's everything I want from a shawl, quite frankly. And it's big, but I like a big shawl. And I think this is the last shawl we have. I believe this is the last shawl I made in Madeleine Tosh. And it's another Helen Stewart shawl. It's Sprite's Fen. It's a quite a recent design. And I faded it with three skeins of Madeleine Tosh that was on sale at Leap. So this is how I wear that. And given now that I'm working with a kind of three quarter pie shawl with the Greur shawl, and I've done a lot of half pie shawls with Helen Stewart, it makes sense for me to do a full pie with the Oracle shawl. I think that's the next step that I need to make. So yeah, I am glad you have waited through all these shawls with me. Now we can get to the garments, which is one of my favourite things to make. So saving the best for last, as usual. Although mittens and shawls, I'm pretty into that as well. So let's start with the one that I wear the most. I wear this thing all the time. Probably doesn't smell the greatest right now. But yeah, it's my Eleanor cardigan. Um, it is a amazing pattern that was such a treat to make with a really interesting construction method with a kind of shoulder cap here that you do top down, seamless. It's the contiguous method and it's great and I want to make another one of these in red. The only negative thing I have to say about this, and that was my fault, I knit too far down before I separate it into body and sleeve. So the armholes are ridiculous ridiculously deep like this is crazy they should have stopped more like here uh, but it means I can wear them a lot before it smells too sweaty so yeah and I should have done the button bands double I think because they are a bit weak with the mustache but yeah I love the whole everything about this I did some clever decreases at the back so it's more fitted and flattering and uh yeah i just love it i need more of this more colors and more yarn just yeah has to happen and i didn't actually make the sweater i won it but it's also an unmuted design and i was fortunate to win it in the advent calendar giveaway thing that lisa go which is a yogurt brand had and so i got this and it's knit in pickles pure wool which is a yarn i'm dying to try so yeah i just wanted to mention that and I made myself a Icelandic sweater. This is the Let Lopi vest that I added some sleeves on, which was surprisingly easy for a newbie that I was at the time. And I also did some very nice uh, kind of fitting at the back here. I don't know if you can see that, but it kind of struts further down. And I learned this from Kate Davies Owl sweater, I think. And it's got some clever waist shaping and it's just really nice and still fits me very, very well. And it makes me feel all cool and 70, so nothing wrong with that. And I did knit this actually in Drops Charisma, which is a superwash yarn, but as far as superwash yarn goes, it's not bad for colour work, actually. So if that's all you can afford, and you want to use that for, say, the Marius Cal, go for it. Although I would probably recommend Lima over that, but still, it's pretty good. And here's my Marius in cotton. See, I'm not beyond going for <laughs> unconventional fibres sometimes. So I went with the Cotton Marius because I wanted to have a Marius I could wear without sweating like a pig. Uh, I guess the downside is that I went for like dishcloth cotton, which is not very strong. The pilling might be detrimental to the fabric in the end. So I'm careful about how much I wear this. 
I did some very nice waist fitting, but it completely goes out as soon as I put on the sweater. It just kind of loses its shapes immediately. It's it's really odd. But hey, I have it. It's a uh, Marius. I can whip up the sweater in no time. I think it's super easy. And we have my Santa Star. You've seen this before. I steak this at Edinburgh, actually. Just put it out on the restaurant table and just went... I have buttons for this. I need to just put them in. It's just been a bit too warm to wear it, really. So yeah, I knit this in Derma Fienergarn and yeah, I'm happy with it. And it's nice and cropped. Uh, I didn't fit it in a way. It's literally just cropped and that's all I needed to do to make it a nice fit. And I didn't do any rib. I just kind of did it double. So it's kind of lined here. So you don't get to see any color work right away. Although you can see the flutes here and we have another marius yoke because like i said i can whip up these in no time it's just a big baggy one though i wish the neckline would be more closed i might go redo the neckline at some point and decrease a bit more these are actually uh, cedar wood rings that you can put on your hangers i just found them at leylands down the road um so yeah it's a really big marius this one just for lounging and slouching and whatnot i knit I knitted in Drops Baby Merino, which is nice and cozy. Not the optimal colour work yarn, but not the worst if you want to go super wash merino. And here's some Kate Davies knits. I did the owl sweater first in Cascade Eco, and I found it far too scratchy to actually want to wear it, so I did it in Drops Merino. Uh, what's it called? The Big Merino? I think it's called Big Merino. And this is kind of a very good example of the trade off you do with rustic yarn. Yes, this one isn't the kindest to my neckline, but this one doesn't really work out. Because if you look at it closely, it is pretty much see-through. The yarn is just so thick and so super wash treated, it doesn't felt at all. So it hasn't clung together. I knit them at the same gauge, so they're the same thickness of yarn, but it's like a web. It just doesn't, yeah, become a cohesive fabric as I usually say uh, whereas this thing you really can't see that much through despite it being at the same gauge and the same thickness uh, and it's just far more durable and the cables pop beautifully and yeah so while well, I wasn't happy with it at the time I'm certainly happy I have it now and yeah Cascade Eco is actually quite good and I think also I have toughened up my yarn sensitivity because when I had first made this I was like it's far too scratchy I could never wear it and now I'm like actually it's fine because I have been working with rustic yarn so much and that's kind of how it works you just get used to it so I never say like oh I'm too sensitive I can't wear it unless you have like eczema or something because you can actually adapt your skin even if you're not aware that you're doing it which I guess happened to me so here's another Marius I think I'm gonna make this one again because this is in Sisu which is a superwash sport weight nylon sock yarn with wool obviously it's held up really well i am very surprised how sturdy sisu is but i wanted an ask i want a really woolly cardigan and i want to crop it because the length here just doesn't fit my body the really tight rib should have been in on my waist not around my widest part but i was just gonna follow the pattern with this thing and i have learned since that no fit it to you just do that so yeah and we have Epistrophe, which is a Kate Davis design. I think it's gorgeous and very easy to make. Very quick. I guess I only wish that I had done it a bit deeper from here onto here. Because it's just a bit too shallow and it goes straight up to my arms. It's nice. It's really hard to find that balance. Because you can see I did the opposite with Eleanor and that wasn't very nice either. So I need to find the, the middle ground there. I may have with a flea card again. I hope I have. And then there's Agatha, which I haven't weaved in the ends yet because I'm really unsure what to do with her. The bodice is fine. The sleeves, however, are ridiculous. I think the shaping of the sleeves is just not very good. This is an awkward shape. It's just not working out. It does not look nice on me, although it's a bit more <laughs> gets covered then. Like this sleeve in particular, it's just ridiculous. Like it's a wide and wonky shaped and i stuck with the pattern so um yeah i need to start decreasing evenly from the top i think other than that it's great and it's in quinzacode larth which is fantastic yarn 
So I and I really enjoyed making this thing. It was a really treat to actually make because there's always some interest in it. It's no stockinet uh, project by any means. So I can still recommend the pattern, but do look at some different uh, sleeve decreases. And I was actually really happy with the sleeve decreases on my chuck. And it's the same designer, so if you have both patterns, then go look at chuck and decrease at that rate. Just make sure that if the stock in the knit stitch comes before the purl stitch, you SSK. Whereas if the purl stitch comes before the knit stitch, you knit two together. And obviously if both are knit stitch, you knit together. And if both are purl stitch, you purl together. Hope that makes sense. And yeah, so this is Chuck from the back and this is Chuck from the front. And I'm really happy with this thing and it fits super, super well. And it's my most recent garment. And it was quick to make. And it's in Schillister. Iron weight, lamb's wool, merino, dyed in lac, uh, which is a natural dye of red. We're done. Oh my god, this is such a long episode. So hopefully you understand why we're doing works in progress next episode. I am so, so glad that you are still watching this thing and that I've gotten so much support from everybody who has bought their subscription for my mitten club. I want to remind you that the early bird price is still out there, it's still going, like you can still get it uh, for a lot cheaper and it's essentially one mitten for free, uh, the early bird price, that's the equivalent of it anyway and yeah, just thank you, thank you so much, you've saved my summer in so many ways, you have no idea and it makes me so excited and so humbled and I'm gonna stop now, but yeah. I will see you next week. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching. I hope you'll have a great week. Bye.